Hello, and welcome to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. In the last episode, we visited Clayton, New York, probably one of our favorite small towns we visited during our two-week sailing vacation in the Thousand Islands and Lake Ontario. If you haven't seen that episode already, I'll leave a card at the top so you can go back and watch that one first. In that episode, we also show you that if you're Canadian and you motor into a U.S. town like this, how easy it is to check into U.S. Customs with a video phone. And this episode starts off where that one ended. We're heading east on the St. Lawrence to go to Cedar Point State Park, where I finally break out my Mavic Pro and get some drone footage. I know what you're thinking. It's been a while since I've used my Mavic Pro in episodes, but that's because the Canadian drone laws were a little insane there for a while. But now that they've been relaxed and we are in the United States for most of the next two weeks, get to use it in almost every episode. So we've got a lot to look forward to. All that coming up in this episode of Cruising Off Duty. You know what they say, if there's two sailboats going the same direction, it's a race. I guess that means even if we're motoring. We are slow folks compared to everybody else, I guess. I know she's supposed to be following me, she's passing me, she's waving. <laughs> even though there was no wind to sail, it was still a beautiful trip upriver. Before you know it, we were there. And you know what Janice is like. I barely set the anchor and she's already jumping in the water to swim. Okay, Janice is going to go swimming yet again. I'm waiting all afternoon. I said, do you want me to tell you what the temperature is? And, get, and she's like, no. I don't want to wait around. I want to get it. All right. It's warmer than last time, that's for sure. Okay, three, two, one. That's good. Not too cold? It's not as bad as last time, no. For you, baby. Very nice. Look at some of the carol's boat. Don't get hypothermia. No. See, I'm not crazy. I'm gonna go and have a quick spritz in the shower. So I don't want to swim in below 70 degrees temperatures. Are you sure it's not? You want me to check now the weather? Okay, so I'm gonna check what the weather or weather weather what the temperature really is. I, I still won't be swimming in it. Okay, there's the pool thermometer in the water. Give it a little chance to digest. You gotta remember too, this pool thermometer is right near the surface where it would be a wee bit warmer. I'm gonna take a wild guess that it is 70 degrees at best. Three, two, one. What did I say? 70 degrees, it's actually 69. No, I'll give it 69 to 70 degrees. Still too cold for me. I think for me, it's gotta be at least 75. I mean, we have all that luxurious engine heat but I can have a quick shower in. Why would I want to go swimming in 69 degree temperatures? No thank you. More proof that Janice is actually part polar bear. She's crazy. Okay, I don't know if we got a chance to say this, but this is Cedar Point, Cedar Point <laughs> State Park. So it's a state park, but there's a wee bit of anchorable water right next to their swimming area. And Janice is obviously swimming like a crazy woman in 69 degrees weather. Or temperatures, she went over and had quite a long conversation with Carol. Now she's coming back. I ended up going down and having a luxurious shower in my boat with that engine heat. I feel all crisp and clean and I'm not putting sunscreen on. That's it, I don't care if there's still a little bit of sun left. Because once I do that, I feel greasy. I don't feel clean. And of course being not shaven doesn't make me feel clean as well. Janice, do you feel clean now? I feel clean. She feels clean. Very refreshed. Very refreshed. What's the bag? Mushrooms. Oh, okay. Portobello mushrooms for the barbecue. Okay. So today was a success. Went to Clayton, signed into the U.S. for the first time. Not 100% sure if we should sign in every time we anchor. I don't think so. It's only when we go into a town. We're going to have to tell U.S. Customs where we are again. So first time worked out well. And now we're anchored uh, not where we checked in. So if I'm wrong, put it in the comments. I don't think we're supposed to check in again when we anchor. but. We're not going to, so that's all there is to it. This is the beauty of the Thousand Islands all around us. End of a beautiful day, we're having dinner with Carol. And uh, we brought, she brought over some things we don't usually have. Portobello mushrooms and quinoa with salsa. Yumminess. We're gonna try this, Janice, okay. more often. I'll learn to cook, okay, I promise. <laughs> well, the portobello mushrooms. And the mushrooms, you did everything. Well, yeah, but we just never buy them. I, I, do you need this? I Googled it. 
What was the sauce? So it's a glaze, a glaze okay. balsamic glaze, and then, and then goat, goat cheese. cheese. So tasty. Well, an end of a good day. Morning. Morning. So we're just uh, did a quick drone flight just to get a lay of the land around here at what's it Cedar Point State Park. Yep. Uh, went over the water and uh, filmed our boat. And now we're going to be heading towards Cape Vincent, right? Yes. According to Carol, it's very nice, very cute. Very cute. Small though, so we might yep. cover it pretty quick. And then our next plan of attack is we got to head back across the Canadian side and go to Kingston quickly to go to the post office and pick up our second folding bike that didn't show up when it should have. So that's the plan of attack. There goes Carol. She had to uh, sail off her anchor because her electrical is completely dead. And we guess, we checked her, her batteries and we think what happened was she left her fridge, which is not an operable fridge, the switch turned on overnight and it killed her batteries. She has a wee little solar panel on the back, so we're hoping that by the time she sails back towards Treasure Island, She'll have enough battery power to start her engines. So I went over with a spare battery to see if I could get it started with her, but it didn't work. So what, what a trooper. What? You don't have any auto help. Oh, you're gonna have to hand steer. Yeah. Shows your metal. See ya. And she's just saying she doesn't have her auto helm now that she has no battery power, so she's gonna have to hand steer. Our windlass is working again. Oh, Janice is, my is butt just in the air again? no, I'm not filming your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Janice is putting some new zip ties on our. Uh, what's that? 50 feet? Mark? Yeah, what's it? Yeah, the zip ties kind of broke off. We had one of them up, so she added another one to show 50 feet. So now you pull it up. It's a lot easier cleaning this way too, because as it comes up, so when you're manually pulling it up, you don't have energy to take all the seaweed off. Turn it. I bet it 
better not let that go through. No, that's fine. You, you can let it go through. It'll pull through. Then you can clean that. <laughs> clean the Sasquatch off of the chain. That's the problem. The Ottawa River was mud and clay, and we didn't have a lot of this. So that is how we unanchor now that we have a windlass. So much easier. So much easier than pulling it up by hand. So we're on our way. So we're adrift right now with the winds just pushing us out into St. Lawrence, and then we'll uh, head towards Cape Vincent. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Cruising Off Duty. If you did, you can help with the channel by giving it a thumbs up. In the next episode, we go to Cape Vincent and try and pick up some of those city docks. Well, they're kind of underwater, but we'll get into that. And then we head to downtown Kingston. And to get the Mavic Pro out again and show you what Confederation Basin in downtown Kingston looks like from the air. So subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising. <laughs>